Hi, this is Mr. Hamilton's Math Bites, and this lesson is on quadratic relations. Quadratic relations are unlike any type of linear relation, obviously. We know linear relations look something like this, but a quadratic relation can look something like this, or it can look something like this. All right, one we've described as opening down, and the other one we've describing as opening up. Now, the first thing that we looked at in quadratic relations in grade 10 would have been investigating the first and second differences, sometimes referred to as the finite differences. And so what we do whenever we're finding the first or second differences is we take the second value, in this case the 1, and we subtract the first value, the one previous to it. That would be the 4. So 1 minus 4 gives me negative 3. I do the same thing for the next two values. I take the later one and subtract the previous one. So 0 minus 1, negative 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. 4 minus 1 is 3, 9 minus 4 is 5, and then 16 minus 9 is 7. Now what I need to do is I can tell that because those first differences are not the same, therefore it is not linear. Now let's see if the second differences are the same. If they're the same, we know that it has to be quadratic. We do negative 1 and we subtract negative 3. Be careful with the signs there. So we're doing really negative 1 plus 3. That gives me a value of 2. Do the same thing with the next value. 1 minus negative 1. That again gives me 2. The next one is 3 minus 1, which gives me 2. 5 minus 3, which gives me 2. And 7 minus 5, which also gives me 2. And so we can conclude, therefore, this is quadratic because the second differences are the same. Well, now that we have the idea of finite differences established, let's have a quick look back at the forms of a quadratic relation that we saw in grade 10. One of those forms is standard form. And if you re can recall, there are two pieces of information that are interesting here, both the A value and the C value. The A value, if you recall, is the same in every case. So if I can circle the A value in all the forms. And the A value tells me the stretch factor or the compression factor. I'm going to write that across all of them because it's the same in every case. So it's the stretch or compression factor vertically. All right. So we don't have a horizontal stretch or compression. We're not talking about that yet. We will soon, but it's just vertical stretch or compression. The C value in the case of the standard form tells us the y-intercept. Moving over to the vertex form, again, the A value is the vertical stretch or compression. The H is the X value of the vertex. And in fact, that means that the H would represent the, in fact, if we said um, Y equals whatever H is, that's going to be the equation for the axis of symmetry. Remember, the axis of symmetry is directly down the middle of a parabola. The k value represents the vertical value, or the y value of the vertex. Okay, so that tells us where the vertex is, and again, the a value tells me if it's stretched or compressed vertically. And the last form we looked at was factored form. The r value tells me where one zero is, and the s value tells me where the other zero is. Now keep in mind here that the general forms are minus r and minus s. Now some of you who are keen are recognizing that I've missed something, and you're absolutely right. I've missed the fact that the a value doesn't only give me the stretch of compression factor vertically, but it also tells me if it's flipped over the x-axis. It's been flipped vertically. So if it's negative, it's been flipped vertically. So all these different forms have unique attributes to them, and there are obviously different times where we might want to know different things. For example, if we wanted to know when a ball hit the water, we would want to know about the factored form. If we wanted to know how high a ball went up in the air, we want to have it in vertex form or know something about the vertex. 
If we wanted to find out how high the ball was launched from, we'd want to know it in standard form because we'd be interested in the C value. So depending on the situation and what we're asked, the different forms are more applicable than others. Let's look at graphing from the vertex form. What, trans what transformations need to be applied to y equals x squared to graph y equals negative 2 x minus 3 squared minus 4? Graph this parabola using these transformations, clearly showing each step. What is the vertex and axis of symmetry? So what we need to do here is we first recognize that the a value is negative 2, the h value is positive 3, because our general form is x minus h, and then the k value is equal to 4, negative 4. It's amazing what you can do te with technology, because suddenly there's a graph there. But uh, let's continue on with identifying the a, h, and k values and what those mean. The a value is representing a vertical stretch greater than 1 by a factor of 2. And the other thing it represents, it represents a flip or a um, shift. Flip is probably the better term. Flip over the x-axis. Okay, it's going to open down. The h value represents a shift of three units. Remember, h is the x value, so that's representing a shift of three units to the right because it's a positive h value. The k value is negative four, and that's going to represent a shift of four units down. So what we're going to do first here is we're going to start with the graph of y equals x squared. And so if you think about it, if x is 0, y equals x squared gives me y being 0. If x is 1, 1 squared is 1. Likewise with negative 1. If x is 2, 2 squared is 4. A little tricky to do that with a great graph paper, but I hope you can see the picture decently. Negative 2, again, negative 2 squared is 4. And the last value I'll do here is 3 and 9. 3 squared is 9, being a little weird to me here, and negative 3 squared is also 9. So you have a parabola that looks something like that. That's y equals x squared. Now we move on to applying the a value, and we're going to graph next y equals negative 2x squared. So the negative 2 does two things. We said it's going to vertically stretch it by a factor of 2. So all the y values are going to be doubled, but they're also going to be negative because it flips over the x-axis. So the 0, 0 point is going to stay the same, but the point that was 1, 1 is going to become 1, negative 2. We multiply that y value of 1 by negative 2, which gives me negative 2. Likewise, negative 1 times, when x is negative 1, the y value again was negative, was positive 1. So there we go. That also is going to become negative 2. A y value of 4 is going to become negative 8. And unfortunately, I don't have enough room on this graph to show you the y value of 9. That's going to become negative 18, but it doesn't quite fit on this graph. So there it is. There's y equals negative 2x squared. The next one I'm going to graph here is going to be the shift. And really, that's the last step I need to include. I'm going to take all the points from the black one, shift them to the right 3 and down 4. So I'm going to start with a vertex. I'm going to go over 3 and down 4. So the new vertex is going to be at 3, negative 4. Then I'm going to take the next point that was over 1 from that and down 2. We'll look right about there. Program really doesn't like to draw dots. And the other one was over one down two as well. And then we could continue on with the other point, which was a little further down, which is a little out of range of what I have here. But it's going to be somewhere around there and there. If you have graph paper, you can draw this even more accurately than I did. 
but this is the equation y equals negative 2x minus 3l squared minus 4. 